Long-term viewers of this channel will know that I've been using the Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED for about two years now, and I thought it was about time to give you an update on my thoughts about this telescope. I'm gonna be telling you what I like about the telescope, what I don't like about the telescope, and as well, sharing some images that I've taken using it. I'm not gonna dive into too much detail about the tech spec of the telescope because you can actually watch a video that I did, it's the first ever video I did on this channel actually, where I give my thoughts and a deep dive into the Evo Star 72 ED. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link to that in the description down below. But a really brief rundown of the specs for those of you that are watching that are interested in purchasing this telescope. The Skywatcher 72 ED is is a 3 inch refractor with a focal length of 420 mm at f 5.8. If you use the 0.85 flattener reducer that Skywatcher produced then imaging is at uh, f 4.9. It's also two kilograms in weight. So for those of you who are looking to put this on any star tracker like the Skywatcher Star Adventurer or the IOP Charm Sky Guider Pro, then it's a really ideal telescope because uh, of its light weight. So what don't I like about this telescope? With the caveat that the model that I have is the first one that they make with the longer tube assembly. And so I don't have experience with the shorter tube assembly. So one of these especially won't apply but I'm going to include it anyway for those of you who are buying this second hand. The dovetail that comes with the 72ED is actually just too short to achieve balance. Now I'm not sure with the shorter tube assembly if that's still true, but if I push my um, telescope so that the dovetail is all the way at the back and then mount that as far over as possible, it just isn't possible to achieve balance. Now I could and did get away with it for quite a long time using my HEQ5 Pro mount. I was able to get two minute exposures without it actually being perfectly balanced in declination. And that seemed to work fine. However, if you are then mounting a guide camera, guide scope, if you've got a heavy DSLR on the end like I did, then the balance is gonna be out. And so if you're wanting to guide, then just bear that in mind that the mount might struggle more than it needs to. And so it would be worthwhile investing in a longer dovetail. Now, if you have the newer model with the shorter tube assembly, this one definitely doesn't apply. But if you have the older one like I do, then if you buy the camera rotator, which is threaded to accept two inch filters, then you won't actually be able to achieve focus because there isn't enough backspace there. And so if you, want to move away from just using uh, clip-in filters in the future then you won't be able to use that camera rotator because you just won't be able to uh, achieve focus with it. And finally the glass in the 72ED isn't the FPL 53 glass which is very common glass that you would see among refractor telescopes and actually the rest of the Evo Star range uses FPL 53 glass. For some reason the 72ED doesn't have FPL 53 glass. I don't know why. What I would add to that though is that while I don't actually have experience in using any of the other telescopes in the range, I can certainly produce what I would call pretty reasonable images for the setup that I have. So I don't necessarily see that as a problem, but it's just something to bear in mind if you're looking for comparable telescopes. Okay, so moving on to what I do like about this telescope, and for me, this one was really important when I was looking out. It's especially important for those who are on a budget, and I think this is the cheapest astrophotography telescope that you can buy brand new. That's quite a bold statement. I haven't done that much research, but I don't think there are any cheaper. There's certainly no cheaper refractor telescopes that you can buy than the 72ED. And therefore, it is an absolute bargain for the price. And the quality, I feel, isn't compromised that much. I've already talked about the glass, but actually the overall feel of the telescope is that it is a quality made telescope. I like that it's small and I like that it's lightweight, which means that it's ideal for quite a lot of scenarios actually. If you're somebody who likes to get out in the field with a portable tracking mount but wants to move on and take the next step from just using a camera lens, the 72ED is ideal for that because it only weighs two kilograms and it's only 400 mil in length so it would fit into um, backpacks and things like that. So it's ideal for that. If you're looking for a nice wide field setup to shoot nebulae, you can actually on some targets get both targets within the field of view depending on what camera you're using. So for example, if I'm using my uh, modified DSLR shooting the Veil Nebula, then I can actually get the East and West Veil Nebula with Pickering's Triangle in the middle into one field of view. And I think that's really impressive. Um, 
the downside to that is that it's not great for galaxies. You can take an image of the Andromeda galaxy, absolutely no problem. Um, other galaxies, 420 mil, it is a bit short. You can still take pictures of galaxies, I still, I still do it, but bear in mind that some of the images that you see on the likes of Instagram and stuff will uh, be taken with telescopes with longer focal lengths than the 72 ED has so just bear that in mind if you're swaying more towards taking images of galaxies then you probably don't want to look at the 72 ED this is really just a wide field nebula telescope it comes with an aluminium carry case which is great because you can fit your accessories in there like your field flattener and, and filters and things like that and it's absolutely ideal if you're if you're out traveling and are worried about you know damaging your telescope then having the aluminium box available is, is just absolutely ideal and if you're like me you sort of tear your telescope down quite regularly because you've got nowhere in your house to store it then actually just having a nice hard case to keep the telescope in uh, just offers that sort of peace of mind rather than just having it tucked away in a corner with a bit of bubble wrap around it or something like that. And finally, this isn't an important one at all, but it does matter to some people. And I just like the look of the telescope. You know, I look at that telescope and think that looks really nice. When we've had visitors round to the house and I've left my telescope set up, um, people always comment on it saying that um, they really like the look of it and it looks really smart, looks really professional. And so I include that on this list of, of things that I like. For me, that's not a reason to not buy a telescope. If I look at the telescope and think, oh, it doesn't really look that great, I pro probably wouldn't put me off buying it but it might do for some people so I include it on this list. Now if you're considering buying this telescope then I will leave some links in the description down below for some online retailers that you can buy the telescope from. Just note that some of the links are affiliate links so if you did go on to then make a purchase then you will not get charged at all for that but I'll make a small commission so it's at no cost to you but I'll make a small commission out of that just to be totally transparent about that. Finally I'll leave you with some example images so that you can see the capability of this telescope. I'll include include all of the acquisition detail, exposure time, ISO settings, etc, etc, along with what camera I used so that you can see what this telescope is capable of. And for full transparency, I'm in a Bortle 4 slash 5 area, so I've got fairly dark skies. So if you're in a Bortle 8 area and thinking, oh, how's he managed to get that with only one hour of data? It's because I do have um, reasonably dark skies. Um, so just bear that in mind when you look at some of the images. Now, if you sat there wondering whether or not I would buy this telescope again in hindsight after using it for two years, then the answer is 100% yes. I would absolutely buy this telescope again. I think for the price, the quality, and just the ease of use, having a really wide field of view, especially for beginners, is really forgiving and therefore it's a bit easier to get into the hobby of astrophotography, especially if you're using a, tr a star tracker that doesn't have a go-to capability, then the 72ED is absolutely perfect for your needs. I don't really see the need to upgrade this telescope for me anytime soon and so I'm going to be sticking with it for the foreseeable future. Will I upgrade in the future? Definitely will upgrade in the future, but I will probably also still keep the 72ED and still use it. So I would 100% buy this telescope again. I hope you enjoy the images that are about to follow and I'll see you in the next one.